Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. You are watching a series on YouTube where we are going through the entire book of Revelation. Now we're doing it in little small bite-sized chunks. Uh, we're just making short videos, five minutes here or eight minutes or 10, just so that we can get uh, everything we can out of this so we can learn it but then also go through it slowly so it's not scary and we can give every sentence the attention it deserves. We are starting a brand new chapter. We are in Revelation chapter three. Of course, you can always go back and watch the earlier videos or you can just start right here. It's perfectly fine. We invite you to read along with us. Our chapter today is uh, Jesus and he's speaking to a church in Sardis. And this church thinks that they're alive. They think they're a popular church, a good church, but Jesus is gonna tell them something different. Revelation chapter three begins, to the angel of the church in Sardis write, the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Did you catch that last phrase? That's not a good thing. I mean, because this is a letter from Jesus, right? It's the one of the seven stars that he holds in his hand that Jesus says at the beginning of all of this, right? I hold all of you in my hand. I hold all these churches in my hand. The book of Revelation is Jesus dictating a letter to John to these seven churches. They're all located in and around what we would say is modern Turkey. And when you read these letters, they, they sound very critical. Most of them contain these large areas where Jesus says, your church needs to improve. And so far we've seen all sorts of examples uh, of good churches and bad churches, but I think today's church example is probably the worst. The church of Sardis, Jesus says, is dead. And right before that, Jesus says, you have a reputation though. You have a reputation of being alive. Did you know that every church has a reputation? It's true, they do. You might be talking to someone, one of your friends about a church where you go to or a church that you had visited, and in your own words, you'll hear yourself talk about the reputation the church has. You could say, oh, that's the Catholic church. That's that large church, that's that mega church. I think that's that church where that our pastor got fired. That church is always full. You know, I drive by that church and the parking lot's always empty. I've heard that church is old. I think that church is really young. I think that church has a great pastor, a great staff, a great youth group, a wonderful worship, right? I, you know, I think their pastor is an author. I think their pastor is on TV. Isn't their pastor famous? All of that, right? All of that, that's reputation. That's the reputation from the world. And that's usually how you and I judge or label a church. We might know our own church reputation. We might even think we have a good one, or maybe we think we should improve ours. Jesus says, you know, that's just what the world thinks. Jesus says, do you know what I think? I think you're dead, which admittedly is brutal, right? That's really harsh and quite possibly the worst thing you could ever say about a church. There's millions of people who will be in church on Sunday. Some polls say as much as 50% of America is either in some sort of church or synagogue. And we might pat ourselves on the back and we might say, good job. Or we might look down at attendance and see that attendance is going up. Or maybe when a church is on television or a church is receiving uh, praise in the local paper, we might say, this is a good thing. But what does it all mean? What does it mean if it's just a show? What if it means if it's just fake or artificial? I think churches are aware of their reputation. I think churches try to get good reputations. I think we work hard for it. And I think our biggest fear is that we might have a bad reputation or that somebody might think bad of us. But Revelation chapter three, Jesus doesn't pull any punches. He says, I know what the world thinks and I don't care. This is a scary letter to this church because God says to this church, you are dead. I don't want to be that. 
I don't want a great reputation if it costs me my salvation or my soul or Jesus' approval. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, Jesus says, When you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. In other words, just because we do the right things, just because we say the right things, we think that equals a good grade. We think that'll make the teacher happy. And every Sunday, we have a routine, just like our work week has a routine, just like your home life has a routine. And we should be careful not to get into a routine with God. Remember, every single Sunday, we are coming into a family reunion where God has promised that he will be there too. God is there. When we go to church, when we gather as a congregation, God reveals himself to us in the setting that he chose for us. So a church can never be on autopilot. We have to always be actively listening to the voice of God and then moving exactly where God instructs. We must be obeying God weekly, even daily. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.